good to be with you again as we come together in this recorded service. Today is the second Sunday after Pentecost. It is a day in which we remember that Jesus called some people to be disciples in his day, even as he calls us now to be disciples in our day. Later in this worship, I will consecrate the bread and the wine for Holy Communion. I will pause briefly so that you can gather some bread, some wine, grape juice, or water, and after consecration, we can eat the bread and drink the wine, or grape juice, or water, and by all of that, we will receive God's blessing. It will be Holy Communion for us. May God bless us and lead us as we worship together. A portion of Psalm 8, the psalm appointed for this day. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The Holy Gospel appointed for this day, written in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, reading at the 16th verse. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. We pray the prayer of the day. God of compassion. You have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I begin the sermon in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. As people flood our streets demonstrating, we've heard their words and we've heard their chants. We've read their signs, and the question is, shall we dominate them? Some very loud voices say that. No matter how many skulls get hit with a baton, no matter how many chokeholds are applied, no matter how many soldiers show up, no matter how much tear gas is shut off, no matter how many helicopters hover low, no matter how many Humvees drive on our city streets, none of that will make all of us to be what some want us to be. The human heart and the human mind go deeper. God created us with a conscience. God made us all bleed red, black people, brown people, yellow people, even white-skinned people, and we determine through all of this how much alike we all are. We are given minds and hearts and souls. We are what we are by choice. Even in tough and hard times, we are what we are, and some of us are heroes. Remember the name Terry Waite. He was assigned by the Archbishop of Canterbury to be the envoy to Beirut to work out negotiations for the release of hostages in 1980. It didn't go well for him. He became a hostage himself. He spent four years in a tiny cell in a Beirut prison, cut off from everything, from church, from family, from civilization. He was isolated and alone. But over the years, he developed a sense of trust with those guarding him to the point where one of them did something rather risky for him. 
He slipped one precious battery into Terry Wade's cell, which Terry used to power his radio. Terry Wade waited until Sunday to turn on his radio to BBC so he could listen to a worship service. He was so hungry to hear a word from the Lord. He was so hungry for the comfort of the gospel. So imagine how he felt when he heard the preacher begin, my theme for this morning is spiritual lessons from Winnie the Pooh. Terry Waite needed more. And we church people just have to think and believe and live with greater seriousness. Winnie the Pooh just doesn't cut it. Story is told of a student, a student learning to be a pastor, who one day went to a local nursing home to conduct a worship service. The big lobby where the worship took place was full of elderly people, some with oxygen tanks, some with tubes inserted as medication flowed into their systems, some in wheelchairs, and some sleeping. Aging is hard work. The young student got into the first paragraph of the sermon when suddenly one of the elderly women pulled the joystick on her wheelchair, turned it around, and went back down the hallway to her room shouting, blah, blah, blah. She wanted more. She needed more. And we need more too. Jesus picked out disciples in his day. He picked Simon, called Peter. He picked Andrew, he picked James and John. He picked Alphaeus, he picked Thaddeus, he picked Simon the Zealot, he even picked Judas Iscariot, the betrayer. And doesn't that make you wonder, sort of, why Judas? Couldn't they have interviewed better? Why did they miss what was so essential to discipleship? There must be a word that reaches people a clear, a solid word, a word for those selected to be disciples in New Testament times, and there must be a word, a clear and solid word for us, people selected to be disciples in our time. There must be a word from the Lord, a good word, a solid word, a fitting word, a helpful word, a word that cuts through to our soul, a word that reaches our deepest need, a word that helps us, a word that makes us strong in a world that looks like it's headed in all different wrong directions, a word that directs us to serve and never to dominate, a word that doesn't belittle others and condemns, a word that heals, a comforting word, a word that gives hope, a word of love, a word about love, a word that is love. And there is. There is a word. And Paul writes it in his New Testament letter to the Romans. It's more than just a word. It's several words, as you will hear. But it's a word that instructs us now. It is a word that is especially fitting to us now, in our time. It is a word that we should learn and keep on learning and thinking about and praying over. A word that is with us and leads us day and night and forever and ever. Let love be genuine. That's the word. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. That's the word. Love one another with mutual affection. That's the word. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, that's the word. Be ardent in the spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, that's the word. Be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Extend hospitality, that's the word. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them, that's the word. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. That's the word. 
Do not be haughty. Associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than they are. That's the word. Do not repay evil for evil. Live peaceably with all. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. That's the word. Overcome evil with good. That's the word. It's the word that penetrates and separates life from death, wisdom from foolishness, blessing from curse, and makes serving others far better and far more helpful than domination. So lift us up, Lord, in these tough and hard days. Give us strength. Give us insight and understanding. Inspire us to keep on learning. That's what disciples do. It's the meaning of the word disciple. Give us a heart for others, no matter what color their skin. Give us big jobs to do. We'll take those big jobs on. We're ready. We want to be challenged. We're not afraid. Keep us strong. Make us merciful and love us, Lord. Love us. Love us, love us. Amen. We pray the prayer of intercession. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided us. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own and are not patient with. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for all forced to leave their homes. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Feed all who hunger. Empower all whose voices go unheard. Give healing to those who are sad. Give to our neighbors what they need. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we might discover new ways of living. Minister, uh, minister to us in our work that we do not lose heart. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone on before us and have lived brave lives of faith. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join with all the saints in light. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I ask you, as we prepare for Holy Communion, to gather bread and wine, grape juice or water, place those elements, if you will, before you, and as I speak the words of consecration, hold your hand over the bread, over the wine, over the grape juice, over the water. And after consecration and speaking the Lord's Prayer, eat the bread 
drink the wine or grape juice or water and be blessed. Following this communion, we will speak a prayer of thanksgiving, which I will speak, and then we should know that we are all blessed by the Lord Jesus Christ, who is with us. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And individual glasses of bread and wine are available for you here at Advent Church. I ask you to come receive this blessing from the Lord. We pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Take the bread and eat. Take the wine, the grape juice, or water and drink and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for a blessing now and for a blessing that leads us all into eternal life. We pray together, life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now may our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen.